now and forever, I have been a physical game collector. That's because with digital, you never truly own your games. And to prove that point today, I'm counting down 10 Xbox 360 games you can no longer buy digitally, only physically. Let's get into it. Hello again, thanks and welcome back to a very special episode. That's because today we are talking about physical game collecting and more specifically, physically collecting for the Xbox 360. Now more than ever, it is a very important time to pick up these Xbox 360 games. That's because, as we all know, at the end of July, the Xbox 360 store closes forever. You will no longer be able to buy digital games for the Xbox 360, but some of these games have already disappeared. And today we are counting down 10 Xbox 360 games you can no longer buy digitally, only physically. And with the way that Xbox 360 prices are going, you want to grab these games cheap while you still can. Just before we jump into the list, I want to remind you folks, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe. So I put new videos out every Saturday live at 5, as well as bonus content throughout the week, and I really want you folks along for the ride. And if you really want to go above and beyond to support the channel even more, please consider becoming a supporter over on Patreon. It's only a pound a month, and trust me, you get a lot of bonus content for that pound. Now, onto our list. Our first game on the list this time is Amazing Spider-Man 2. And full disclaimer, this game was released on other consoles, but for today this list is all about Xbox 360 games and we are talking specifically about the Xbox 360 version. That's because this game has gone up and down in price over the past few years and at the moment it is £15 on the CEX website. And this is a game which of course has been taken down off the Xbox store because of licensing. Activision no longer hold the license for Spider-Man, it's been taken back by Disney and this is the only way to play this game. And in the case of the Xbox 360, one of the very best Spider-Man games available. Even as an Xbox gamer, this is one of the best ways to play Spider-Man because of course, unfortunately, the Spider-Man games are now exclusive to the PlayStation. So if you want to go back and relive those memories of playing as Spider-Man, swinging around New York City, this is your best chance. And now it is a great time to buy this game for 15 quid. Now this next game on the list is a strange one, but hear me out. For me, physical game collecting is all about preservation. And while these games were originally released on mobile, Angry Birds Trilogy is one of the only ways to own these original games on a physical disc. And of course, now this is being deleted from the Xbox 360 store, and in future, because it is a digital-only game, it could disappear from mobiles. And for just £6 at CX at the moment, I think there's been no better time to pick up this physical game. Yes, it was originally made as a mobile game, but this plays really, really well on the Xbox 360. You can even play it using the Kinect. I'd recommend probably playing it with a controller, but it's a really fun game, especially in couch co-op. Just passing the controller and just going through these levels as it's one of those games it starts very simple but definitely gets harder and harder as the game goes on and honestly for six pounds why not this next game is a difficult one that's because the price of blue dragon is fluctuating quite a lot at the moment for a multitude of reasons Firstly, the art director on this game is the same person who did the art for Dragon Ball Z and unfortunately has recently passed away, which could be one of the reasons this game has suddenly got up in value. Secondly, of course, now this game is not available digitally, so the physical copy is the only way to play this game. Another factor is that RPGs, and especially JRPGs, tend to rise in value over time. And this especially may be true for the Xbox 360 because it's not a console which is synonymous with RPGs or JRPGs. So let me know in the comments down below. Will you be picking this game up now from CEX for just £15 or waiting to see what the price does in the future? I already own a copy so I've got to take the risk but it'll be interesting to know what you think will happen with the price of this game. Regardless, it is a masterpiece. Deadpool shares a lot of similarities to Amazing Spider-Man 2 from earlier in this list. Once again, it is another victim of licensing, with the Marvel license going over to Disney. But once again, much like Amazing Spider-Man 2, this game is available on other consoles. But the Xbox 360 version of this game is by far and away the cheapest way to play this game. 
And of course, because you cannot buy this game digitally anymore, you have no other way to play this game than to pick up a physical copy. And if you're a Deadpool fan or a Marvel fan or just a fan of big, stupid action games, you owe it to yourself to play this game. It is big, loud, bombastic fun. It breaks the fourth wall all the time and it's an absolutely fantastic game. And here's the thing, this is already an expensive game, but with a new Deadpool movie on the horizon, this game could go up even more. So if you want to pick this game up, I would recommend doing it sooner rather than later. The Xbox 360 version is £20 in CEX at the moment, but this price can only go up. And here's the thing, it took years and years of the fans asking and begging for them to make a Deadpool game. And with studios taking less risks these days and there being less and less video game, comic book, movie tie-in games, who knows when we'll get another Deadpool game to grab this one while he can. I really love the Driver franchise and it's a real shame that this was the only game released on the Xbox 360 from the franchise and to this date the final game in the franchise. And you wouldn't guess it from this trailer but this game has one of the strangest twists and weirdest mechanics in any video game ever released. Okay make sure you're sitting down for this one. Essentially at the start of this game you're involved in a car crash and for the whole of the game you are in a coma. But fear not, while you're in that coma, you can switch into the body of anyone driving any vehicle. So essentially, you can kind of hot swap between other cars. So if you're, say, chasing someone, you could be a police car at first, chase them from behind, and then suddenly teleport into a car coming head on and crash straight into them. It's a very strange mechanic. It's a very strange way of telling this story, but somehow it works. This game plays like an absolute dream. All of the cars handle differently and feel really heavy. It's just an absolutely fantastic game and one you definitely need to check out. Without a shadow of a doubt, Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 are two of the greatest multiplayer games of all time. That is just a fact. If you are a gamer, you owe it to yourself to play Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. They are video game royalty. They are perfection. They have taken the zombie co-op shooter and elevated it to heights never before seen. This is the thing with Valve. They make very few games, but the games they make are absolutely sublime. And honestly, this could be the best game that Valve has ever made. The fact you cannot purchase this online anymore for Xbox is absolutely insane. So whatever you do, make sure you hunt out a physical copy of both Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. Operation Flashpoint, Dragon Rising and Red River came out at the height of popularity of the Call of Duty franchise. But if you come into this game expecting another Call of Duty clone, you are in for a bad time. This is a hyper-realistic shooter. One shot and you are dead. If you get caught in a crossfire in this game, you are dead. If you make a mistake, you are dead. This is very, very realistic war simulation right here. And this is not a game for everyone. This game is very hard to get into. It is not the most accessible game of all time. But once you get ahead around this game, it's absolutely sublime. This is large scale warfare. We're talking air, sea and land. We're talking squad based. It is absolutely fantastic. It has some of the most tense, epic firefights I've ever been in in any game. I still remember playing the first Operation Flashpoint and being blown away. And this just takes everything from that first game and dials it up to 100 the scale of this game is absolutely absurd and if you're a fan of first person shooters and want something different check it out now i said earlier in this video that left 4 dead and left 4 dead 2 are some of the best games ever made by valve where here is the rest of them right here in the orange box quite possibly the greatest compilation of games ever put 
together. So to begin with, we have Half-Life 2, one of the greatest games of all time. Then it's follow-up, Half-Life 2 Episode 2. And then I said earlier how Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 are two of the greatest multiplayer co-op games of all time. Well, here we have one of the best team-based competitive multiplayer games of all time, Team Fortress 2. But that's not all. Rounding up this absolutely amazing collection is a game which I don't think anyone expected from Valve. And it is one of the greatest puzzle games of all time, Portal. This game is absolutely sublime. It is a short game and a game you need to experience. If you are a gamer, you owe it to yourself to pick up the orange box as it is without a shadow of a doubt, one of the best collections of some of the best games of all time. The Prince of Persia franchise is a strange one, and I honestly wonder if Ubisoft know what they are doing with this franchise. And in 2008, they tried to reboot the franchise with this game, Prince of Persia, in brackets, 2008. And this is a very different Prince of Persia game in some ways, but at its core, it's just another absolutely fantastic Prince of Persia game with that kind of parkour, exploration and sword play. A lot of people didn't like the style of this game at the time, but for me, video game collecting is all about preservation and it just seems that Ubisoft is trying to delete this game for the atoms of time. And that's why I think this game is worth picking up. It is very, very cheap at the moment. You can easily find a copy of this for the Xbox 360, but it has disappeared from the Xbox 360 store. And this is the thing, as it seems Ubisoft is trying to delete this game into the history books, I doubt we'll ever see this game online ever again. You would think this would be a game they would add to Ubisoft Plus, but no, this game is being deleted and the only way to preserve this piece of gaming history is to grab the physical disc. And for £1.50, it's more than worth the risk. Some people love it, some people hate it, but for the price, pick it up and make up your own mind. Now, I love real-time strategy games, and unfortunately, you can probably count on one hand the number of strategy games that were released for the Xbox 360. And this game, Ruse, is one of the best strategy games released for the Xbox 360. Set in 1944, at the tail end of World War II, this is an absolutely incredible strategy game. Once again, it is large-scale warfare, but with a difference, and that difference is the ruse. You use these ruses to confuse your enemies. You can send them incorrect intel. You can use the fog of war to camouflage your units. You can use unit abilities such as blitz to absolutely hammer the enemy. This game is very, very tactical and it still looks absolutely amazing today. And even better, this is backwards compatible on the Xbox One. So even if you don't have an Xbox 360, you can still play this game. But like every game on this list, this is only playable with a physical disc. And this game is super cheap at the minute, just £1.50. But remember, at the end of July, the Xbox 360 online store closes forever. And I wonder what will happen to the price of games such as this game, Ruse. At the moment, it's cheap, so grab it while you can. As honestly, I think in the next few years, the price of Xbox 360 games, especially physically, is going to go absolutely crazy. So don't miss the train. Grab Ruse today for just £1.50. There we have it then, folks. That's 10 Xbox 360 games no longer available digitally, only physically. And let me know in the comments down below which games you are hoping to pick up while they are cheap. Now, I have no idea what is going to happen with the Xbox 360 market, but at the minute, it looks like the price of these games is only going to go up. But there's still some super cheap games on the list, so take advantage and buy these games while they're cheap. But we're not quite done yet. There is one more genre of games which I want to talk about because it really adds to this list. I would like to add sports games to this list and more specifically for myself, wrestling games. That's because let's take a franchise such as FIFA. So the new FIFA game comes out and EA does not want you playing last year's FIFA game. You cannot go back and purchase old FIFA games online digitally. They want you to play the new game. But what if you absolutely love 
FIFA 15. That's your favourite FIFA of all time. It has all your favourite teams, players. You love the mechanics of the game. You love the way it plays. The only way to go back and experience some of these older sports games is to own the physical copy of the game. And this is especially true for wrestling games for many different factors. Let's go back and look at some of these specific wrestling games. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm absolutely loving playing WWE 2K24 at the moment. It is a fantastic game game but I want to be able to go back and play some of my favorite wrestling games of all time. Games such as WWE 13 which had one of the very very best single player campaigns of any wrestling game ever made. To be able to go back and play so many iconic Attitude Era wrestlers and relive so many amazing matches was absolutely fantastic. Up until 2K24 this year that was my go-to wrestling game. But there were so many good Xbox 360 wrestling games that are lost on the digital store, such as WWF Legends of WrestleMania, an absolutely fantastic game. And the main reason a lot of these games disappear is licensing, whether for music or the wrestlers themselves. So you go back and look at a game like WWE 2K14, and you can see the reason you cannot buy this digitally. There is so many wrestlers that are either not with the WWE at the moment, or just not even with us, or have just lost the licensing. And you go back and look at some of these classic games and the only way to relive these is physically. Games such as WWE All-Stars. Yes, I know we had a very similar WWE game in this style, but for me, this game was far superior. And let's not even get into other wrestling companies. If you want to go back and play the TNA game, just you don't have to find a copy of it digitally. It's not the best wrestling game of all time, but if you want to fight in a six-sided ring, that is your only option. So don't sleep on all these sports games because at the end of the day, unless you pick them up physically, you may lose them forever. We laugh about these charity shots being full of FIFA games, but who knows? Maybe in 30 or 40 years time, they will be the games that we'll be looking for. Probably not, but you never know. And that's why I always collect physically, not digitally. There we have it then, folks. There was 10 physical Xbox 360 games and an entire genre of games that I recommend you pick up now while they're still cheap. But let me know in the comments down below. Which Xbox 360 games do you, yes you, the viewers, recommend picking up now while they're cheap? It just seems like the Xbox 360 price is going to continue to rise. So let's help each other build our dream physical collections now while we can. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe. And until next time... Keep playing the game. See y'all soon.